Hey everyone, welcome to another installment from Ampro Engineering. In this episode, we're gonna see what other crap we can throw on the LDRC Unimog. So we're gonna put in second motor. We've got a two-speed transmission upgrade kit, which is freaking awesome. So we're gonna add the two-speed components to the factory transmission. Given all the stuff I had to cram in here, I'm actually going to try and drop the trans from the bottom of the car. So we're gonna pull this off here. I used a bit of thread lock, so I had to crack that loose. Come on, those are both gone. There's a screw there, screw there, one there and one there, and we'll see if the trans will drop out. I don't think this is gonna work. The transmission is captured with these studs right here that go through the frame rail. So unfortunately to pull this out, we're gonna have to separate the frame rails a bit. At the front, the only thing that holds it in place is this way over here. And that is a good eh, nearly 100 millimeters from this mounting point. So maybe if I take this thing off, I know I'm just going to take the whole thing apart later. I mean, I absolutely know I'm going to have to do it. I'm just pretending for the moment that I won't. Yeah, I actually will. I took these two mounts also off. Is that going to... Why is nothing helping? Literally nothing. Oh, oh, that did it. That did do it. All right, never mind. So I should have just done that the first time, it would have been good. Okay, will this wiggle out? That's still stuck in there. Now we got it. It'll never go back in. Okay, that's out. Something is caught here. So this is for the headlights. I've modified the heck out of it downstream. So it's never coming off again. We're just gonna... Just... Oh, actually, oh God. I almost did a stupid... Oh boy. <laughs> all these come out also. Cool. Okay, we got all this out now. Oh my god. Uh, because I added 11,000 extra wires for the lights, I can't easily unplug the motor. And the fact of the matter is, I have to plug in this motor anyway. So here's my plan I'm going to just unsolder these two and then jumper them together. So that'll make life a little bit easier for me. I'm not really a massive fan of dual motors since to me, it's an excuse for not sourcing the correct motor in the first place. But it does look cool and you can say I have two motors. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take this guy apart. I've never done this before. I have no instructions, so that's super fun. Okay, we're gonna pull this panel here. These three here will release the motor, just like that. This should come off cool i'm gonna put these straight back in so i don't lose them there is a bearing right there we're going to go ahead and install later remove this gear here okay so this whole thing just came out right that was like that we'll just set it over here i think the part that we're going to see alterations to is the piece that i'm opening up right now we'll pull the transfer case out you slide this out and I suspect we're gonna find screws behind it and I am correct. So given what we're seeing right now, I'm gonna try and flip it over so that everything, all those gears perhaps come out. Can we come out? Cool, that's that's more helpful. I'll keep things a little bit more organized. I don't wanna damage the gear. Oh yeah, it comes right out. Okay, cool. I just didn't wanna cause any damage to it. Okay, got that out. There were three screws right there. That seems excessive two, three, this transfer case will come off. I'm gonna put all three of these right back in. Again, I wanna try and keep things organized. And here is our last screw. Did not unscrew very nicely. Okay, it did not come off very well. So one, two, three, main gear case screws. Okay, so that's how that came out. Obviously, we've got all this room here in the middle. These are the pieces that, that this upgrade came with. Okay, so obviously we can see what we're changing. That's that's good. Okay, so since we're not gonna use this piece anymore, we're gonna take this assembly here. Now I put this together 
And basically we've got the smaller, oh, let's just, I'll just pull it off this way. The larger gear is here. The smaller gear is on this side. Now these can spin freely. So you can see that. Okay. And that's not good when you want to have drive. Therefore, the piece that locks them to the shaft is this center piece here. So this piece in the middle can't move. It basically will lock the side that you want it to engage. Hang on a second if I can get it in. There we go. So it's that side. So now it'll be the larger gear and then it'll be the smaller gear. Now the way this was geared initially, I'm just trying to determine this right now, this gear was idle and this gear was operational. So you have the small gear spinning the big gear. Therefore, you're gonna get a greater amount of torque to turn this larger gear. What's happened now is you're gonna get a larger pinion and a smaller spur. As a result, you'll get a higher top speed, which I think is great because I found this truck's low speed to be acceptable. Its high speed was lacking in that I couldn't even walk with it. So that's great. In my application, I am going to replace these with bearings. Link to those is in the description. Okay, I wanna show you something real fast. This is the bushing that I just took off of this side, okay? Now I'm gonna put it back on. Now I'm gonna grab it. Okay, and I'm gonna try and, it's really hard to tell, but I'm gonna try and spin the spur. Okay, it's not spinning easily. In fact, I'm gonna try and pull it off now. This means that when this bushing was pushed in, well, first off, it, it was pressed on and bushing should not be pressed on. When this was rotating here, the bushing on the outside was spinning. In fact, you can even see the wear on it. That's not how bushings work. Bushings are designed for metal-to-metal -metal contact, not metal-to-plastic. Plastic gets hot and melts over time, so what, has, what will happen eventually, very soon, is this bore will just hollow out. And yeah, actually, it's not the bushing's fault, it's definitely the shaft's fault. So even this one doesn't want to go on very easily. But we have to, we have to put a bearing there, otherwise it's just going to eat itself. I put the bearing on the end of this, however, the bearing that I had, I'm kind of low on bearings, was a 0.3 millimeters too short. So I happen to have a 0.3 millimeter washer. I put that in there just as a spacer. Okay, so that's gonna go there. To keep things in place, I'm gonna put a tad more grease on these and then I'm gonna put this cap back on. Okay, next, probably should put a little bit of grease in here too. In fact, before I forget this, we need to grease the shafts because again, these are gonna be rotating on the shafts when they're not engaged. Tamiya grease here, eventually some Tamiya grease. None of this to me. What in the hell is happening here? Why isn't it coming out? Why does this always happen? Just a little bit on here. Don't go too insane or it makes a mess. Okay, there we go. I just realized something too. This gear is nice and smooth. Right here spins real free until I push it all the way and then it tightens up. I think what's happening is there's a bit of flash, which is uh, excess material, we'll call it, on the end of this here, which is simply going to contribute to drag and a decrease in efficiency. So very carefully, not cut my fingers open by cutting off just the little rib here. I think we're gonna free this up. Or I've missed something altogether and it's supposed to be that way and I've ruined the entire system for everybody who's watched this video. Well, it's one of those two in here run it oh my god it's it's like silk now put a bearing on here wash my hands at some point bearing get on there okay we'll put a little bit of grease inside here as well it's really not all that important because it really doesn't move uh it's just basically for uh, when it goes and you want to put too much in there because it can actually hydro lock uh which means that the um almost a suction action that's happening so that when the servo is trying to move it from left to right it'll actually be a lot harder and uh either be sluggish or potentially even get stuck because it's probably not the greatest servo in the world. All right, I keep talking. Let's put that in here. Everything seems to engage nicely. This is our shift fork. This came pressed on. So that'll go there. Let everything fall apart again. Take all your all the work you just did and undo it. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And now so you can see how this works. This will go back and forth like that, changing your gears. The front of the gearbox um, has one hole for a bearing it goes in like this, okay. So I'm gonna put a bearing on this shaft here. So again, this bushing also was having issues. I'm gonna pull this back out. I'm gonna try and 
clean up some of the flash around the end of this shaft and then we'll put a bearing on it. All right, so extremely annoying, but I did have to get the bearing onto that shaft. It's as far down as it'll go, but we are simply discovering areas in the system that previously were pretty much binding up and creating drag and uh, unnecessary wear. Before we start complaining about the quality of the products in the company, remember that these are very, very, very inexpensive parts and you have to, you know, take it with a grain of salt. So this shaft is going to go through here. Hmm. Is that right? Yep. Okay. No, it's not. Let me open that hole up. What was I just saying a second ago? I forgot. I have this here we pin file. Make sure you blow all this dust out. You don't want that getting in the system here. Also, don't make the hole too big. You don't want slop and you don't want stuff like dust getting in. Let's try this again. This might take a couple of attempts. Uh, it's starting to go in. Okay, it took about four or five attempts, but I got it just big enough to slide up and down. Do not put grease on that. That is exposed to the elements and will um, basically bind up the system. All right, so we're gonna put this back together. Bloody hell. So the bearing does have to be pressed further down the shaft here. Just, just bear with me. All right, so that's all been sorted. What the son of a... Damn it. At this point, ignore my cussing and go ahead and reassemble the three screws that hold the main gearbox section. Really important to back thread on all these screws. You don't want to cut new threads. I don't trust this plastic at all. Okay, so just testing this real fast. I'm holding the shift fork in. I'm gonna grab this shaft here and turn it just to make sure Everything is spinning freely. If we pull this out, it should further engage as we rotate this. There it goes. Okay, that's all working. I reattached the three screws from the transfer case housing and I'm gonna press fit this gear on. Note that it has a little flat, so it must be clocked. So that should just pop right in there. It goes back on pretty easy. Um, I'd like to replace all of these bearings. I'm going to do that right now. Again, I cannot get these bearings on because the when they cut the shaft right here, uh, see it gets stuck right there, kind of a little bit of flash, and that is preventing these from seating, which also meant that the entire time, yeah, this bushing was spinning. You can actually see it. It's a bit shiny in a few places, so I'm going to clean that up a bit right now. So this is fully assembled. I'm Checking my area here and I don't see any missing pieces. So now let's take a look at the rest of this. Okay, so I reached out to my buddy at LDRC and this is what he told me to do. This kit came with this little rubber tube. I cut off about two millimeters of it. Ran that through this flanged self-tapping screw and I placed it through hole number three. I think we're going to have to alter that depending on how it uh, works in the it's actually in the car. But anyway, so that is where we're at. So that holds that together and it allows for this to happen. And the reason for that is there's no endpoints on this channel. So it just allows a little bit of play. And then here is this little conical shaped piece. Again, the flange screw there. And then just run it like that. So this is what's going to pull on that shaft. Not too thrilled about how this is designed, but we'll see how that works. It might be, a, I think it's a press fit. Basically it goes there. We have this servo that it came with. That's where I got the servo horn from. So we're going to have to install the servo. The servo, this is from under the car, of course, will go right in here. There should be two extra screws that came with the kit. So go ahead and screw that in right there. The servo plugs into this port here. Please ignore everything else you see here. I added these, including the header pins. So don't worry if yours doesn't have this. Okay, so forgive this because it's hard to see. The little rod is right at the tip of my finger right there. If you push this button here, B, it is all the way in this orientation. Press the button again, it goes counterclockwise this way. So this way would be pushed in and that means that way. I'm gonna go ahead and push this sucker all the way on to mount it. We're gonna take this and just press it onto the, oh wow. That is not going to stay. That went on way too easy. 
I don't believe that for a second. Sorry. Okay, so we'll just set that in right there. Okay, so that's working. We'll press B. I feel like it's gonna fall out. Okay, for me, that seems to be pretty much there. I also don't hear the servo making any terrible noises, which is important. So now that that's in there, we'll take the screw and just go ahead and thread it in. Okay, that's in. I'm done, and honestly, I'm exhausted. I know that this was kind of a weird video where I put the fog lights on and the transmission, and I thought it was going to be like, oh, no problem, we'll just throw this in. And it wasn't. Here's my thought. I like how tiny and compact the transmission is. Super cool. I like how you can just modify the existing one very, very cheaply. I didn't even mind all the little tweaking that I had to do because I thought that was kind of fun. But then there were other things like I didn't like the shift linkage at all. I think it's really hokey. It seems to work and only time will tell. I'll have a running video of this vehicle. It does increase the speed of the truck uh, probably by about 50%, which I don't think is actually enough. I think it should be a little bit faster. The truck travels just about at walking speed and I'd like to see it just slightly above walking speed. Definitely a good trail truck, but it's not going to be capable of... Uh, at this point, any kind of rock crawling or any any kind of extreme trail truck driving is just not going to work. With that said, do you want it? Oh boy, oh boy, that's a hard one. So here's the deal. I have a link. I When I finished this, I actually went ahead and searched this transmission upgrade. And someone else did a really, really good video on this trans. So link in the description and up here as well. I've also seen people put a WPL two speed in here. Now I love the WPL two speed as the motor is really meaty and I've run those things for years without any issues. But again, this truck is a little bit bigger and I think a little bit, it's kind of heavy. Link up here to someone put in a two speed WPL in this. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it informative. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.